Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nain and Davon arrived at Chancellor Winters. Dilly appeared a few seconds later. Dilly intended to discuss an idea with Davon alone, but Davon informed him that Nate may listen in. The three men sat down, and Billy explained that he and Jill believed it was time to add the Abbott name to the company's name and rebrand it as Abbott Chancellor Winters, or AC Dolly. Nate observed that Jack was receiving top billing. Alphabetical order, Billy answered. Davon wondered why it had only recently become an issue, given that Jill had never asked to change the firm name before. Why is it only an issue now that you're here? Davon questioned Billy. Billy argued that altering the company's name was not a power grab, but rather a method to recognize Jill's contribution to the company's current condition. Davon volunteered to call Lily, discuss the situation with her, and then contact Billy. Billy agreed and departed. Nate reassured Davon that he was on her side. They pondered about Billy's motivations. Davon determined that changing the firm name was Billy's power play. Nate told Davon about the talk he and Billy had about Aunt Mamie and her reasons. Nate and Davon agreed that they needed to keep an eye on Billy. Ashley returned to the Abbott home, shaken by the little vehicle accident she had just witnessed, as well as recollections of the tragedy that had caused her to lose Brad's baby. Ashley heard multiple voices in her head, including her own. Where are you, Jack? Is she okay? Stop. Poor thing. Shut up needs help. Do not give in. Be strong. Ashley called out to Tracy and Diane, but neither responded. Ashley looked over to the bar and focused on the decanter and glass on display. Nikki and Jack ended their meal at the Newman property, and Nikki thanked him for joining her. Jack reminded Nikki of the AA acronym HELT. Never allow herself to become too hungry, angry, lonely, or teared. Victor arrived. Nikki informed Victor that Jack was there to relieve her worry. Nikki informed her husband that Jordan had called again, and that she had spoken with her. Victor snatched Nikki's phone and contacted Jordan, but he did not answer. Victor inquired about the call from Jordan. Nikki told Victor that she started things with Jordan because she was tired of Jordan keeping her a prisoner in her own home. Nikki told Victor that she had told Jordan to stay away from the Newmans. Victor chastised Jack for enabling Nikki to talk with the woman who nearly killed his entire family. Jack informed Victor that he had learned about the call after the fact. Nikki verified it, telling Victor that Lauren had advised her not to let Jordan bully her. Victor began to question his decision to hire Lauren to assist Nikki with Newman Media. Nikki advised Victor that seeking assistance from Lauren was a smart option. Jack reminded Victor that integrating Lauren in Nikki's support staff and at Newman Media was his idea. Victor questioned Jack's competence as Nikki's sponsor after hearing this comment. Jack said he was a wonderful sponsor because he cared about Nikki. Nikki described how much she needed a drink following her phone talk with Jordan. Nikki was grateful that Lauren had phoned Jack who had stopped everything in the middle of a workday to help her. Nikki credited Lauren and Jack for her sobriety. Victor was relieved Nikki hadn't drunk. He hesitantly thanked Jack for coming to Nikki's help before suggesting that Jack go. Jack checked with Nikki, who agreed that Jack should resume his day. Jack left. Victor became angry. He yelled at Nikki. That woman threatened you, and you called Jack Abbott? I am your husband. Nikki shouted, Victor, I will not choose Jack over you. I am choosing sobriety over drinking. But when you challenge him in that manner, I get upset. Victor relented. If it helps you, then I continue supporting him as your sponsor. Victor said with a chuckle. Nikki thanked Victor. Nikki told Victor about the talk she had with Jordan. That woman is a psychopath. We must stop her. Nikki declared. Victor told Nikki that he had devised a plan to trap Jordan, but he refused to reveal any details. I have it under control, Victor insisted. Nikki did not want to be kept in the dark since her mind would make up a variety of ideas. 
Victor told Nikki that his trap would involve convincing Jordan that he wanted to make atonement for what had happened to Jordan's sister, Eve Howard. After receiving a message from Jordan, Nikki deduced that Victor intended to set the trap with Claire. That's exactly what Dad wants to do, but I'm not going to allow it, Victoria stated as she entered the room. Victoria told Nikki that she disagreed with Victor's idea to engage Claire in the Jordan trap. Victor insisted that he had not manipulated Claire, but Claire, like the rest of the Newmans, wanted Jordan gone. Victoria told her parents that she and Cole had nearly agreed to Victor's plan, but they didn't want to jeopardize Claire's rehabilitation. She expressed concern that it would undermine all of Claire's therapy and development. This isn't fair to Claire. We need to find another way, Victoria declared. Nikki agreed with Victoria because she did not want to compromise Claire's safety. Victor admitted that Claire was family and that he did not want anything bad to happen to her. But he claimed that Claire was tougher than Victoria gave her credit for. Nikki spoke up. There's another way to get to Jordan, Nikki explained. Victor inquired. And what, pray tell, is that? Nikki responded, through me. Jordan entered the empty glass lounge disguised in eyeglasses and a long red wig and approached Seth, who was drinking beer at a table. Jordan pretended to be Isabel, a fallen alcoholic. She thought Seth looked like he needed another drink. Seth told Isabel that he loved drinking alone. Isabel told Seth that they shared a mutual friend, Nikki Newman. Isabel purchased Seth another beer. Seth questioned how she knew Nikki. Isabel made up a tragic story about how she and Nikki had been great friends who had partied together until the hangovers and broken relationships caught up with them. Isabel reported that she and Nikki had become sober together, which had strengthened their bond. Isabel continued to spin her fictitious tale to Seth. Isabel said she had stumbled, but when she badly wanted to stay sober again, Nikki cut her out of her life because she was a threat to Nikki's recovery. Isabel assured Seth that she wasn't blaming Nikki. How could anyone hate Nikki Newman? She questioned, smiling. Seth asked Isabel how she knew his name. She told him she had heard him share at an AA meeting and had learned enough to conclude that he and Nikki were friends. Past tense, Seth told her. He told Isabel about how he had been Nikki's sponsor, but she had called him out and cut him off when he started drinking again. Isabel advised Seth to not blame himself. How could I not? I feel dreadful. Seth said, she needed me and I let her down. Seth acknowledged that he missed his friendship with Nikki and thought she had done more for him than he had for her. Isabel told Seth not to let his pride stand in the way of reaching out to Nikki. Being friends with Nikki Newman is a rare and great thing. Don't throw it away, she urged him. Seth suggested that Isabel follow her own counsel and phone Nikki. Isabel declared that it was too late for her, but she cared about Seth because she recognized a small part of herself in him. Sith was convinced it was too late to salvage his friendship with Nikki as well. Saving your friendship with Nikki could change your world, Isabel told him. Ashley finished her drink and set down the glass. Jack arrived. Ashley gasped aloud when she heard the door shut. Jack apologized for frightening his sister. He could tell Ashley was extremely disturbed. He offered to assist, but Ashley stated she had to do it herself. Jack begged Ashley not to lock him out. Ashley informed Jack that there was nothing he could do. I'm barely hanging on, she admits. Ashley informed Jack about the little vehicle accident she had recently endured. She spoke openly about all of the previous sentiments and emotions that the event had triggered. Ashley sobbed down in her brother's arms. I feel like I'll never stop crying, like I want to curl up in a ball and run away. Ashley yelled, run away and do not return. Jack hugged Ashley tightly and tried to tell her that everything would be fine. What's happening? Ashley sobbed. Jack comforted his sister and assured her she would be fine. Ashley remained calm and thanked Jack for his wise words.